Well guys, I have some bad news. This is gonna be a really difficult video for me to make because I have to admit failure. Nobody ever likes to admit failure. But I made the mistake and I have to own up to my mistakes and hopefully you guys can learn from my difficult lesson. So the other night I discovered that our temperature had fluctuated in our incubator very dramatically. It went up to 102 degrees. I quickly adjusted the temperature, got it back down, but I knew that there was a very high probability that any developing eggs would have failed at this point. Darn it, guys. I really don't want to make this video, but I know that it's a learning experience for others to learn from. I didn't want to say it, but this incubator is probably not gonna be used in our hatching anymore. So I'm not sure if it's something that I can send back to the manufacturer to see if they can repair it or get it working well again. But the heating element hasn't been as reliable the last couple of hatchings, to be quite honest with you. We've had a lot of issues. That is why I put a new incubator, still a nice, Styrofoam hoverbater, the basics, nothing fancy, because they worked good for a long time. I've had, probably had them, I don't know, 10, almost 10 years maybe, Ryan? You think? Yeah. The temperature spiked in the first week being in the incubator, and I'm afraid it might have killed the chicks that were forming. I looked just now and it didn't look good guys there was definitely development in a lot of eggs i didn't look at them all but in the handful that i pulled out quickly and looked at with the new egg handler that came with the incubator and i saw blood lines veining that's supposed to be there but also at the edges where they were like at the tips where their fingertips spread out where it looks like tree branches and the tips of the tree branch it looked like there might have been a blood ring forming. So unfortunately, that means that I think they have passed. I also didn't see any independent movement like I had in the video before where I showed you day seven candling. If you haven't seen that, it's a really good video that shows you exactly what to look for when you're candling eggs and how to see the different things, whether it's a winner, quitter, or yoker. And unfortunately, I think we had a lot of winners that just turned into quitters because of an incubator malfunction. So unfortunately, nothing can be done for those eggs other than to wait and check them again in a week and see if anything survived and continued to grow and um, pull the ones that didn't. And the good news is we just got a replacement in the mail today. Um, a wonderful subscriber purchased it off of our wish list very grateful for that thank you very much it could not have come at a better time so our next round of hatching will go much better this new incubator is going to be our for our celadon quail eggs that we're hatching so we're we were just setting it up getting ready to put them in in the morning once it's come to temperature correctly but i'm very grateful that we have a dear supporter of our channel who was nice enough to send that to us and if you're wondering about our wish list, it's down in the comments below. I, while I'm standing here, I just realized that this is another dear friend who drew this for me, Catherine at Daybird Aviaries. You see, Catherine, I have it up on my bulletin board of reminders. I was using it for the kids' home school at first, and then I kind of took over it for my to-do list. <laughs> so hopefully... This next batch will go very smoothly and I can run another batch of eggs and maybe get back with Robert and get some of his eggs because he was nice enough to give me some and unfortunately with the temperature going up to 102 that one time that I caught it, I don't know, I, I feel bad. So, but hopefully the next batch will go very good with a new incubator that doesn't malfunction all the time. And when I checked them, I saw what looked like eggs that were developing that were turning into blood rings. So I knew I had to give it a few more days and see 
And this morning, I woke up to the smell of rotten egg. One of them had exploded. So now I am outside with the entire incubator, and they may all be going in the compost bucket. I'm going to have to go through one at a time, candling with my new egg handler, and seeing which ones might possibly still have a developing embryo. I'm really sad about this. This is something I never want to happen. But I have recently figured out in the process of trying to diagnose why this happened. I discussed the situation with my friend Robert at Daybird Aviary. It just so happened to be the incubator with all of his eggs in it that this happened to. I'm sorry, Robert. I wish I had done better. But after talking to him, I have learned a very serious lesson that I didn't know about before. And I want to make sure that you guys know about this so that it's not a problem for you in the future either. So I've been using these incubators for 10 years. They have been great. It's just the last year, even into the year before, where I had some difficulties in hatching. And I thought it was because I was putting the incubators in our laundry room, which is not heated. And I thought the fluctuation of temperatures was causing the damage because of being in a room that fluctuated temperatures. But apparently, when you're not keeping an eye on it, you don't see when it spikes. And apparently, my thermostat, which is a wafer thermostat, was bad. Upon troubleshooting with Robert, I found out you're actually supposed to replace those wafers every year. I've never in 10 years replaced it. So it's not the product's fault for sure. It survived much longer than it was supposed to. It was my fault for not knowing that there was maintenance I was supposed to do on these incubators. And I had no clue. So now I get to say goodbye to a lot of eggs that would have been chicks. And it's not going to be fun. It's going to be gross. It's going to be smelly. So I just wanted to make this video not to show you the grossness, but to talk to you about what you need to know when you're incubating. And apparently that was one thing I never knew, even though I've been incubating for a long time. So I know there's probably other people out there that have not learned this lesson either. So if you have one of these style incubators with a wafer thermostat, please replace it. Replace it right now. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to see really good out here in the light, but I have a feeling that it's not really gonna matter. Oh, it smells horrible. Let me tell you, if you've never had an egg blow up on you in the incubator, I can't see at all. I'm gonna have to do this inside which I really didn't want to do because it's really gross. Shoot. So obviously some of these, I'm probably going to be able to tell just by looking at them. This is the one that exploded. This one has like spotting on the shell. That's probably an indication it's going bad. Sometimes you'll just see little weepy spots that almost look like little boogers. So we're gonna see what we can do to figure out which ones are bad. Unfortunately, the last time I was in the bathroom kindling eggs, it was to see the great development I was seeing for day seven. That other incubator is one I need to check too because it is also an old incubator. So this is not gonna be fun. I am praying that some of them survived, but I'm not hopeful that any of them have. So we'll see. So you can see that this one began to develop and then died. It's got the blood ring. It's got a stationary glob on the side. So that is what we don't want to see, but it is unfortunate. Here's another example of one that has passed. You see the blood ring. It passed earlier in development. If you're interested in learning how to candle eggs at day seven, I have a great video 
with lots of details for that. I'll link it above. On the other end of the spectrum, life does survive in at least one of the eggs. It's a miracle. Okay, this was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I'm really relieved to say that we do have lots of chicks that are still developing. Unfortunately, we did lose quite a few. These are all ones that had to be removed from the incubator. A lot of them on the bottom layer were what appeared to be unfertile, but a lot of them had passed. And what we have left, all of these have a definite chick in them, moving and vibrant. These ones here had what looked like could have been a developing embryo, but I didn't see definite movement. So I'm going to leave them in for further exam later on. But I'm not done yet. I need to actually take these eggs very carefully and keep them warm and sanitize this incubator because the bacteria that came out of that exploded egg is not something you want in your incubator while you're hatching new babies. Well, I guess this goes to show you that even if you mess up, life is going to happen even without perfect care and perfect temperatures life finds a way so we will be having a hatch out of this incubator after all i'm pretty psyched about that